In the days following my spoiler-free review of House of the Dragons Episode 9, I realized how limiting the spoiler-free format has been for that show compared to The Rings of Power. And no episode could have brought that home like Episode 9. Why? Because while it was an interesting and captivating episode, even my immediate reaction told me there was something wrong with it. Something was off and it was not up to the quality the show had shown up to this episode. Especially since we went from the best episode in the series in episode 8, to the worst episode in the series in episode 9. It had me scratching my head, and some of that comes through in a vague, uneasy sort of way in my review. Having listened to it to make sure I was not imagining things, it was there. If I was left up to my own devices, I would probably simply shrug it off and hope the season 1 finale went back to the high standard the show was setting for itself before that penultimate episode's belly flop. (sighs) But Hollywood is still Hollywood, and 2022 is still 2022. And so, in keeping with that, the Hollywood reporter's James Hibbard sat down with Episode 9 writer Sarah Hess and director Claire Kilner for an interview on what it was they showed us in that episode. And yes, it is everything you have come to expect from the denizens of Hollyweird. The interview starts off with the obligatory softball. How do you keep being even more awesome than you already were? Now, to be fair, there was some truth to a little of the lady's answers to this opener in that by the time you get to episode 9, the actors playing the roles are settled into the characters. They are who they are going to be going forward. As I noted with Millie Alcock in episode 1 and Emma Darcy in episode 6, there was stiffness as the two actresses got comfortable being Princess Rhaenyra Targaryen. The rest of their answer was just arrogance disguised in playful jesting. Then, however, Hibbert actually goes and asks an interesting question that reveals more than these two wanted to reveal. At least, that's how I see it. Maybe they are so arrogant as to miss what it is they let slip. Hibbert's question was, quote, Does Allison want this? Yes, she misunderstood the king's dying words, but was that what she wanted to hear anyway? Unquote. The first line of Hess's response was she had to check with Olivia Cook as to whether her answer was right. What? You wrote something, but had to check with an actress who had nothing to do with the writing process to make sure what you thought you wrote and why was correct. What are you doing writing on a major production if you have no idea as to the motivations and actions of the characters you are writing about? Especially asking the person I would be least likely to ask about anything on this show, Olivia Cook. That woman has made plain since the day she was cast that she viewed this role as an opportunity to spread the message, or at least her favorite part of it, namely, feminism. But we will get back to that issue later in the interview. Then Kilner adds in that Otto Hightower is actually worrying in his head over whether Allison is telling the truth about the king's last words. That is patently idiotic. And they both should damn well know it, since they were the ones involved in writing and directing that episode. Otto Hightower would not care less if the king meant it or not, or if Allison was telling the truth or not. He would likely have come up with that story anyway, even if Allison had not heard what she claimed, and misunderstood in her deviant son's favor. How are these women allowed near this show? And are we sure they are not Jeff Bezos' plants? Then we descend into the vapid feminism that is slowly killing Hollywood 
along with their other peccadilloes. Hibbert sees Allison clearly and asks what her deal is. Why is she either allowing or not stopping what her father and his minions are doing mere hours after the king died? Hess and Kilner give such a brainless answer that I can completely believe that they are responsible for the mess that last episode wound up being. Kilner simply says, quote, But she wants to save her friend's life. Unquote. That, despite Hibbard not even mentioning Rhaenyra. Hess fleshes out the dumb by adding that Alicent really doesn't want to kill Rhaenyra, that Viserys wouldn't want that. And besides, how do we really know what went on in those rooms? The histories are written by men, quote, unreliable narrators, unquote, who only really know big events that happened in history not what goes on behind the scenes. Also, they were all misogynists who had bad views on women. History says Allison is a villain, quote, an evil conniving bitch, unquote. But who are we to say that? Who knows what is true? And there is current Hollywood in a nutshell. There are few writers left in the land of granola that know what a true hero and a true villain is anymore. This is shown most blatantly by Disney giving all of their villains from their classic animated movies origin movies of their own, wherein they are shown in sympathetic lights. Cruella and Maleficent have already gotten that treatment, and there are rumors of others, including Ursula from the upcoming live-action remake of The Little Mermaid. Then there is their problem of not knowing how to write heroes, as the newest remake Pinocchio and the She-Hulk show showed. The fact that there is even a question as to whether Allison is a villain is astounding, especially since these two twits are responsible for writing and directing the foot fetish scene in Episode 9 of House of the Dragon. Allison is the one holding the reins of Lord Laris Strong, who is only Lord Strong because Alicent wanted his brother and father out of the way, and Laris was all too happy to have them burned alive. The next part of the interview veers right into fantasy, and not any of the good kinds, as the two women blame the men for the mess that the two women are causing in this show. And that is the thing the feminists involved with the show seem to forget. They can blame the patriarchy all they want, but this coming war is between two women who are jockeying for the same thing. Power. They both want the throne. Rhaenyra because that is what her father wanted, and she has come to want that as well, both for herself and her children. And Alicent, who really would prefer to take it herself, as Rhaenys suggested in this very episode, how did these chicks not remember this from their own show? But also for her son, who could not possibly care less about the throne if he tried. Well, at least until he realized during the coronation how much power and love he garners from being king. It's good to be the king, especially if you are a pervert and sadist. Which leads nicely into the next bit of idiocy that came out of Hess and Kilner. Kilner specifically for this one. The two women spout a lot of word salad and justification for why Aegon is a bastard, but it's not really his fault. Kilner states, quote, In the real world, I don't have sympathy for rapists, but for character, we are very sympathetic toward him, because we were very conscious that we didn't want him to be Joffrey Baratheon from Game of Thrones. He is not a sadist, unquote. He is not a sadist? Right. Did they miss the part about him going down to Lower Town to watch the little kids with filed nails and teeth fighting each other to the death? Or is this a first rule of Fight Club sort of thing? Or what happens at Kitty Fight Club stays at Kitty Fight Club? Help me out here. What am I missing about Aegon that makes him a sympathetic character 
and these two flitter brains vacuous skulls. And exactly who was it that should have been teaching Aegon that no means no, as far as the being a rapist thing is concerned? All right, his mother, the angelic and totally not a villain Allison. It certainly couldn't be his father because the poor man was rotting to death long before he could. Grandpa? Yeah, I don't see Allison trusting her father with that either. No, on this point, Kilner and Hess are just as delusional about Aegon as they are about Allison. And finally, Hibbert asked what irritated me about episode 9 the most. Namely, the ending. And once again, we get an answer from Sarah Hess that proves she should be working on the Rings of Power. When asked why Rhaenys didn't just have her dragon scorch the entire coronation party around the throne and thereby saving everyone the trouble of a bloody, costly, and weakening civil war after killing all of those peasants with her entrance, Hess, with a perkiness and self-congratulatory humor that almost drips off the page, replies, It's Game of Thrones. Civilians don't count. Hibbert persists, and Hess continues on in a fashion that shows she plainly does not understand history, politics, or Game of Thrones, in saying that Rhaenys thinks it's not her fight, that this is between Alicent and Rhaenyra. Besides, Rhaenys and Alicent had a motherhood, girl power moment together. And besides, as always, it is all the terrible men's fault. Damn the patriarchy. Yes, I am taking liberties with what they said, but they might as well have said what I did exactly the way I did it. It was easily the stupidest moment in the entire nine episodes of House of the Dragon. Taken in isolation, I might have shrugged it off, as I said in the beginning of this video. But then, the twits responsible for it had to go and splatter it all over the press as if it were something clever they came up with. Yes, it looked good when I was watching the show in the moment. However, the entire episode was leaving me with an uneasy feeling as each new stupid decision and wrong move piled on top of the previous by each of the characters. It all culminated with the wanton disregard for the lives of those innocent citizens in the temple who were herded along with Rhaenys to witness the coronation. Not content with that stupidity, these two twits came up with something even more moronic in Rhaenys' display in front of the new king and all of those who put him there, having her dragon roar rather than burn the lot to cinders and save everyone the coming tragedies before she flies off. Everything that comes after that scene is now Rhaenys' fault, because she could have prevented it all. And contrary to what Hess and Kilner seem to think, Rhaenys will be firmly involved in the coming war, if for no other reason than because her granddaughters are betrothed to Rhaenyra's kids and her house is pledged to the princess as allies. Depending on how closely they follow the books, Rhaenys will be a more active participant than the writer and the director of this imbecilic episode seem to understand. And so, instead of going into the last episode of House of the Dragon Season 1 with some hope that this is just a glitch, these two have dashed that, and I am preparing myself for a Season 8 Game of Thrones possibility where such thoughts had not previously entered my mind in relation to the series. Up through Episode 8, I was watching this series with shocked enjoyment, surprised at how good it was, given I was expecting it to be on par with the soul-destroying dumpster fire that was the Rings of Power. Instead, we got a show full of intriguing characters all flitting around each other as they danced their way towards civil war. It was a show full of excellent character work, exquisite dialogue, costuming that looked both authentic and lived in, Scenery both gorgeous and commonplace as the scene demanded, and music that was every bit as good for the ears as what the eyes were enjoying on screen. Did every part of the show work at all times? 
Of course not, and I have said as much over the course of the season. But up until now, nearly every new episode, with the possible exception of episode 6, was the new best episode. Episode 9 was easily the worst, and this interview by James Hibbard for The Hollywood Reporter shed some light on why that might have been, given who the writer and the director for the episode were, and what was, or was not, going through what passes for their brains. Nothing in this interview makes me at all happy to know that these two idiots are probably going to be involved in future episodes. Especially since Hess was already the writer on one episode and Kilner the director on another. They seem to imply they will be working on season two as well. As for Hibbard himself, he could have been less the fawning simp and done better to follow up questions instead of helping them explain away the dumbest episode of House of the Dragon yet. To be fair, The Hollywood Reporter is an industry rag, and if he wants access, he probably has to whore himself out like this. If he doesn't bend over in interviews like this, then he stops getting such interviews. Still, it is probably part of the problem that the industry press are lapdogs for the studios instead of pushing back on all of their bad decisions. Much like the critics, the entertainment press is corrupted and broken. That is all for this video. If you like what I do here, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, make sure the bell icon is clicked on so you are notified when new videos are uploaded. Share the video and comment down below to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. I will link the article in the description and my social media and Patreon will be down there as well. Still a little under the weather, so I'm not sure what will be next or if House of the Dragon finale will be the next video, so stay tuned. Tschüss.